All right, welcome everybody. You get home from work and you've got your mask, you've got your keys, your phone, your wallet, all that good stuff, and you're looking to disinfect it. You could grab the Clorox wipes like this, but how awkward is that, especially with your, if you're dealing with like a cloth mask or something? Uh, not to mention the waste it produced, produces, and you use a full kind of Clorox sheet for, you know, a couple of things, and then it you just pitch it, right? So is it really going the distance? So I was looking for an efficient way, and I heard about UV light, uh, and that's probably why you're here, and uh, welcome. Hopefully we can help you out. I've got three different UV light systems that we're testing out. The one to the right is a wand. The one in the middle is kind of a deep bowl uh, with a lid, and the one on the left is similar, but it's a little more shallow. We're going to be testing it out with one of these strips. And by the way, I'll put links down below for everything, so if you like what you see in the video, you can pick, pick that up. And uh, I will be testing each one out and then putting forth my final recommendation. So stay with me, grab some popcorn, sit down, and... Let's begin. So the first one we're going to be looking at, and I got all these online, right? And I wasn't sure which one to go with. Um, and by the way, this video is based on the assumption that UV light does work. And keep in mind, I am no expert at all, just a DIYer trying to make a good purchasing decision, right? So the first one that we're looking at has this deep plastic bowl. Uh, it's nothing fancy at all. I mean, it could easily be a Tupperware bowl, right? Um, I wouldn't say it's flimsy, it doesn't bend or anything like that, but it definitely has the advantage of a deep, um, look how deep that is. I mean, you can put plenty of things in there at one time, but the bulb is a little lightweight, I would say. It's very small, and it's got this little blue tab that you can kind of lift off. Now, in order to find out if that UV light is indeed activated, um, requires some manipulation, which we'll get at here in a minute. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and plug it in. Uh, it does not come with the actual wall plug adapter, but it does have the U, uh, USB adapter with this input on the end. So you might have to go find where you recharge your phone, for example, and use one of those to fit the cord into the wall itself. But not a big deal. I think a lot of electronics are sold that way these days. Helps keep the cost down. So the idea is that you put the lid on and you press this button and after five minutes on the top here, you can see it says five, 15 and 30 minutes, which is a nice feature. I don't know how long it actually takes for it to be quote disinfected. Um, it does come with some instruction manuals and you'll notice the measurement here on the wavelength for the UV is 185 N M. Whatever that means, my understanding is that you need around 250 for it to actually activate and you uh, for use as a germicide. So I'm not actually recommending this one necessarily based on that, if that is indeed true. You'll have to research that on your own. Go ahead and Google it and see if you can find out more than I can. Now, as far as if the light turns on and is working, because this does have a great advantage of being ultra big, you can put everything in there, your wallet, your keys and everything, and just turn, hit that button and walk away. If the UV does its job, this is a great purchasing decision, I think. But uh, the lid, the light only activates when the lid is completely on. And I tried to, you saw that just there, I tried to put the camera, sneak it underneath there, you can see. Well, there's some contact points on the lid and the base, and that light, uh, only turns on and activates when you press the power button, but the lid has to be attached to the base. Those contact points have to be touching. So I'll put the camera inside and put the camera up and you can see there it does indeed turn on. So that's, that's nice. Now, if you have one or if you're looking for a more DIY innovative way without hurting or breaking the device, you can actually unplug the uh, or uh, unscrew the, the plug in little feature here. So there's two little set screws on the back and you just take those out, back those off, and then you can take out this piece. And that is uh, the electronic piece needed to that's where you basically plug in the power cord. Right. Uh, we just removed it from the base itself. So it's really easy and it can fit back here, as you'll see, without hurting it. But that allows you to uh, basically turn the lid over upside down facing you with the light facing you. And you can kind of hold those contact points. You can see my finger there holding that down. And then you reach around and press that button if you want to be uh, for sure if you need to see the light turn on. Um, and if you have a uh, testing strip, which we will get at here in a minute to see is it registering UV light? Or is it just a fake blue light, right? 
because that's the the gamble, the risk that you run buying these online, especially if you look for a, you know, a cheap one that's made somewhere else, you don't really know, at least that's what my experience was. Um, is this fake? Is there a way to authenticate it or not? So we'll get there. Hopefully we can help you out. Now, the second unit uh, that we'll be testing out is this one. It uh, is similarly structured, but it's less deep. So it's made specifically for like a phone, but certainly you could fit like a phone and a mask in there, assuming it has that 360, that uh, 3D uh, UV sterilizing effect. In other words, it just doesn't, you know, disinfect what it's, the light is actually shining on. So these, um, I think both of these devices uh, operate under that assumption that whatever you put in there and you press that button, it's going to disinfect everything inside um, all surfaces. Of course, I'm not a lab, so I can't verify if that's true. So the this device I really like because it seems a little uh, more well-made and definitely has more glass in terms of bulb. You can see there's glass on the side. There's also a sanitized button, and it is voice activated. It actually speaks to you. I don't know how useful that is um, necessarily or how practical, but I suppose it's a nice touch knowing indeed that it's uh, turning on and uh, when it is complete it tells you that uh, sanitation is complete. Now this also has, you can see all that glass area there, one on that side and one on that side. So I get the impression that there's a lot more disinfecting going on with this one compared to the previous one. And again, and you can see the exact measurements below in the description for um, details if you need if you have a certain size device or phone or something that you need to ensure that fits in there you'll want to make sure that that is true we'll put the camera in there and close it up for you so you can just kind of see obviously the focal depth is distance is not very far so the camera will not actually focus very well but you can see kind of saw what it what it looked like inside and you can see the green lights kind of uh, shining uh, on the through the outside as well I don't know if that's good or not but it looks kind of fancy and kind of cool so overall, I'm pr pretty impressed with this. I'm not sure why they decided to put the power input on the front of the device as opposed to the back, because it'd be nice to have that in the back. Um, so if it's going to sit on your countertop or something, you don't actually have the, fa the power cord protruding through the front. I'll show you where I put this thing uh, later on in the video. Found a nice little home for it. And that idea is that this cloth mask, for example, is completely sanitize now one other cool feature uh about this device is that it has you'll notice a, in the middle there's like a little circle and on the right there's a button that says um incense so it basically gives your whatever you put in there a nice um a nice aroma very aromatic and it requires a little bit of oil if you have any essential oils lying around we put lavender just like two drops of lavender and it's no joke it it doesn't overwhelm uh, the senses at all. I mean, your phone's not going to come out smelling like you just sprayed three sprays of perfume or cologne on it. Um, it but it does have a very nice, soft kind of aromatic smell to it, which is which is kind of nice. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm not huge into uh, essential oils, but it was uh, it's it's an interesting feature for sure, and I appreciate it. So that's how that works. And uh, as far as application of the oils, I mentioned you just put a couple of drops in. And we just had this line around the house, so two or three drops should be good. Now, as far as timing goes, both for the incense and the sanitization feature, um, it seems a little quicker than the previous one that we looked at. The previous one had 5, 15, and 30 minutes. Uh, this one seems to be done. It actually has a percentage indicator on the front. It seems to be done sanitizing within three minutes. So it's a little faster. Um, and the wavelength is a little stronger. It measures about 250 or so. So that's important. Now, the last one we're going to be looking at is a different structure or format, so to speak. And uh, it is basically a wand. You can see how it looks right out of the box. It, we get it the right orientation here. It's well wrapped. Um, and it comes with instructions and a little travel case or protective case for it. And there's that test strip that we are going to be using to see which one has true UV light and not. So let's flip this around. You can see we've got glass there. 
Now these, um, this does come with a child uh, lock on it because basically the uh, versatility of this, you can move it around, right? It's not a box, but you can shine it on anything, including your skin, your eyes. Um, there's a child lock on it in case a child gets it. You're, you're definitely, the instructions say, do not get this near your skin, your eyes, you know, for any prolonged amount. So uh, this one is, I would say, generally kind of left, less safe as far as exposure to UV goes. Again, I'm no expert. I have no idea, um, but you'll want to read up on that, certainly. So there's that child lock and then the button and you need to fully recharge it. So this has a, a rechargeable battery so you can actually carry it around with you and disinfect various surfaces. The UV wave light on this or wavelength on this is uh, again, similar to the second one that we measured the box of about 250 as I understand it. Um, but again, you can check out those instructions for specific details and do your own research to see which one you are most comfortable with. Um, but again, my understanding is that 250 or so UV wavelength uh, for UVC light is uh, required for testing. Now, as far as testing goes, if you don't have a UV, uh, UV strip, test strip that um, uh, I'll show you that in a second. They say, and I've, you know, I didn't have any ripe bananas. You're supposed to use a green banana. Um, this one is clearly yellow, but I was still curious to see if it would work. So um, I went ahead and put some electric, or actually that's black duct tape over the banana um, and put it in the first UV light kit that I bought just to see, is that going to burn any, is the color of the banana skin going to change at all over after five, 15 and 30 minute intervals. So, um, I ran that test and it might be a flawed test because again, I didn't have any green bananas and I wasn't going to go run out and buy some green bananas just for, uh, this test. I'm, although I'm sure there's larger inconveniences in life. Uh, I just kind of grabbed what I had. So, and uh, you can see here, we've got no change in, um, in color at all. So I just abandoned that and I went for the actual test. So the first thing I did, I put it under the sunlight to make sure it did not register UVA and UVB light, as I understand it, um, that does, is not the same as UVC. So this test kit measures UVC light. And you can see, I flipped that, um, the lid around, this is our first device that we are testing to see if that card will indeed register. So I'm gonna keep that on. And it's a little awkward as I'm testing it because again, this is designed to be a lid and those contact points require the lid to be closed and we switch that power thing around. So I'm kind of using it awkwardly here. But you can see in the middle, the green light does, see that's a kind of incandescent or fluorescent almost in the middle, kind of an eerie green. So I know that it is putting out some degree or some amount of UV light. Now we'll put it inside the actual basin here and bear with me as I figure out the focusing a little bit. We're a little too close, the focal distance from the camera to the test kit because the camera is inside the basin with it. So sorry about that, but you can still see I've closed the lid now and I've turned it on and the phone seems to be blocking the light and it's not really registering super well. Let's see how it does maybe on the side. So we'll angle that test strip on the side here and turn it on. There we go. So I would say with this one, as long as uh, there's no shadow or anything blocking the light, um, perhaps this one is uh, getting that sanitization effect. Although remember the wavelength was 185. So I don't know if that's too weak or not. You'll want to investigate that on your own. I can't confirm or deny that. Now the second device, the middle one, so to speak, that we uh, looked at earlier, we'll be testing that with the strip. And right off the bat, you can see it's hitting it from both sides and very strongly. I feel really good about this one, actually. It just has a higher quality feel. This is the aromatic one. And again, it has about 250, 253 or something like that uh, UV wavelength. So as we take it out, you can see it actually turns off and you put it back in and it is activating. Let's test out the wand now. This is our third one. And we'll just kind of wave the wand over. And they say you're supposed to be about two inches or so from it for uh, about 10 seconds or so for full sanitization, 10 or 20 seconds. 
So that certainly has its advantages, a lot of maneuverability here. But all three are definitely testing out and putting out true UVC light according to the test strip if that is a reliable test strip. Now as far as if it's actually sanitizing, it's kind of like the Clorox wipes, right? Do you really know if that's even sanitizing? It's wet, but do you know? Well, we're not labs here, right? We're just, we can't see microbes and bacteria and viruses and uh, I can't figure out a way. Or I don't certainly know how to, how to test that DIY style, but um, if we trust the science and trust that UV is, um, you know, a, a sanitizer and does kill bacteria and viruses, then I think we can uh, trust the latter two that we looked at today. The first one may be questionable, maybe too weak, but uh, the wand certainly has some great versatility. Uh, you could do toothbrushes, keyboards, you know, um, masks. But it's very manual, right? Like, wouldn't you like want to just put it all into a box and just forget about it? The, you know, your keys, your phone and things like that. So uh, my conclusion here to kind of finish up the video, uh, the wand offers some great versatility if you're looking for, you know, common high touch areas like your car or things like that. And the, uh, the middle one, not the first one, but the shallow one made for your phone seems to be a little higher quality. And this is kind of where we tuck it. We have a little umbrella stand and I just keep it right in here and put my wallet, my phone in, and I'll do my wife's phone as well separately. Um, and you know, it takes 10 minutes. You kind of switch them out and do that every day after work and feel a lot better about life. So we'll uh, stop that video there, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to like the video as well. Thanks.